We start with a point. Hi, everybody, and welcome back once again. I'm Rob Bryanton, and this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Light Has No Speed. And I'm going to start out with a quote from theoretical physicist and author Peter Russell. From light's point of view, there is no space, no time, no mass. Light does not exist within the world of space, time, and matter. I'm going to provide you with a link to an interesting video featuring Dr. Russell. It's just over an hour long. At about the 46 minute, 25 second mark, he makes a point that I thought was particularly useful for the way it relates to my project. Here's what he says about Einstein's special theory of relativity and the speed of light. All observers experience the speed of light to be the same. The revolutionary thing that came out of this is that space and time are not constant, but vary with the speed of the observer. Space and time are not fixed. So, when a stationary observer observes a ray of light going by, it goes 186,000 miles in one second. Somebody moving at 87% of the speed of light, this is just the way the mathematics work out, would see half that amount of distance and half that amount of time. But the speed would still be the same. 93,000 miles in half a second is the same as 186,000 miles in a second. Someone moving at 99.5% the speed of light sees a tenth of that, 18,600 miles in a tenth of a second. It's still the same speed. What Einstein realized is there's something called the space-time continuum, out of which both space and time appear. The space-time continuum is not like space, it's not like time. It's not a mixture of the two, it's something we don't know and can't describe. What we do know is the space and time that it gives rise to but it never gives rise to the same amounts of space and time. Different observers see differing amounts of space and time, so space and time vary. What Einstein showed is there's something in space-time called the interval. It is like the equivalent of distance or seconds, but the interval is actually the subtraction of the square of space and time. It's actually the square root of that. And that turns out to be constant. So in space-time, there is a constant, and the distance in space-time never changes, although what we experience in space and time changes. So this led to some weird things about light. What happens if you travel at 100% of the speed of light? If you look at the way things are going with our equations here, you'll see that light experiences itself traveling no distance in no time. From light's point of view, light does not exist within space-time. For a photon, Birth and death are the same moment. Light doesn't experience itself traveling through space and time. There is no non-locality for light because it's one phenomenon within one moment. This is light's point of view. So, the reason for this is that the space-time interval in the space-time continuum for light is always zero. Always zero. So from light's point of view, there's no space, no time, no mass. Light does not exist within the world of space, time, and matter. So what do we make of this thing called C, this constant speed? I put speed in quotes deliberately because what we observe as speed, I don't think is speed at all. When I observe a light beam traveling from the back of the room to my eye, in space-time the beginning and the end of the light beam are the same. Space-time is bent, so they are the same. In my frame of reference, I stretch out that zero interval into space and time, and I always stretch out 186,000 miles of space for every second of time. If I'm traveling very fast, I stretch out a smaller amount. Very slow, I stretch out a much larger amount, and so on. So I don't think C is a speed at all. Rather, it's the constant ratio of the manifestation of space and time. For every 186,000 miles of space that appears, one second of time appears. Immanuel Kant was onto this 200 years ago. He said, space and time are the framework within which the mind is constrained to construct its experience of reality. The presentation we looked at here returns us yet again to the important idea that our reality is not continuous and that when we look up into the sky at night, we are looking back into time. But from the photon's point of view, it took no time whatsoever for it to travel from that distant star to my retina. Isn't that an amazing concept to consider? Next time, we're going to talk about cymatics, gravity, and light. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.